In this video, we'll be covering Laville's theorem, which states that for all Hamiltonian systems, for a closed surface in phase space, the volume V enclosed by that surface remains constant as the surface moves through phase space. The phase space of a dynamic system is the set of all possible states of the system, with each state existing as a point in phase space. For an n-dimensional system, we have n positions and n velocities. So phase space is a 2n dimensional space where each axis corresponds to one of the 2n coordinates. For a 1 dimensional system, phase space is defined by the position and velocity of the particle in question. So, say we have a set of initial conditions for a simple system, a mass sliding along a frictionless table subject to no external forces. We have one initial condition at x equals 1, x dot equals 1, 1 at x equals 1, x dot equals 2, and so on. These initial conditions define a surface in phase space. As the system evolves, we see the points move through phase space as position increases but velocity remains constant. Then say we subject the mass to a force, and velocity increases as well. This is our surface moving through phase space. Laville's theorem states that, no matter how the system evolves, the area contained within these points will always remain constant. Another important property of a system evolving through phase space is uniqueness. That is, every orbit through phase space is unique. Two orbits can never exist at the same point in phase space. From this uniqueness theorem, we can immediately see that all initial conditions contained within our surface initially must remain inside it forever, since otherwise two orbits would have to cross. However, this theorem alone doesn't guarantee that our orbits won't expand or contract and change their volume in this way. We will first examine a linear system's phase orbits. The simple harmonic oscillator, given by mx double dot equals negative kx, is a linear system familiar to every physicist. Say we take a simple harmonic oscillator and give it four different initial conditions. 1, 0, 1 1.75, 1.50, and 1.5.75, which form a square in phase space. As we watch the points move through phase space, we can see that the square rotates about the origin, maintaining its shape perfectly at all times. In this case, it is perfectly clear to see that the area enclosed by these points must remain constant. And this is the case for all linear systems. As the points move through phase space, they maintain their orientation relative to each other, holding their original shape. Next, we turn to a more complicated case, the simple pendulum, given by ml squared theta double dot equals negative mgl sine theta. This is a nonlinear system. The force goes as sine theta instead of theta, and we will see some very different behavior in phase space because of it. Let us begin again with a box comprised of four points in phase space. As the points move through phase space, what happens to the area they enclose is much less clear. What is immediately evident is that their orientation to each other changes. Let's add more points to see if we can shed some light on the situation. We examine the simple pendulum's phase portrait with 120 different initial conditions. We see that, though the points initially form a box, as they move through the phase space, the box begins to distort. The longer the points travel through phase space, the more the box's shape morphs, with the points farthest from the origin lagging behind and forming a sort of tail. However, as the rectangle stretches lengthwise, it also squeezes inward, leaving it unclear precisely what happens to the area, although you might be able to believe it remains constant. Let's convince ourselves. In order to be able to do the math that we need to prove Laville's theorem, there are a couple of things we need to cover first. We begin with Hamiltonian mechanics. In Lagrangian mechanics, the math was centered around the Lagrangian, L equals kinetic energy minus potential. In Hamiltonian mechanics, we instead use the Hamiltonian, H equals Ke plus U. Although this is not the most general form of a Hamiltonian, for the purposes of this video, these are the only systems we will consider. Also, in Hamiltonian mechanics, we write H in terms of Q, the parameter of interest, and P, the generalized momentum, given by dl dq dot. The equations of motion in Hamiltonian mechanics are given by q dot equals dh dp and p dot equals negative dh dq. Hamiltonian mechanics gives two first-order differential equations, where Lagrangian gives one second-order equation. Bearing this in mind for later, we move on to the second piece of math we need, the divergence theorem. Say we have an expanding surface. At t equals zero, we have the surface, and at some time dt later, the surface is larger. 
We want to find how the volume enclosed by the surface is changing in time. Taking a small section, we see that the volume of this section is given by base times height. The change in volume of our surface is the summation of all of these small areas, so we say dv is the integral of base times height. The base in this case is the length dA, and the height is the component of v dt that is perpendicular to dA. We call n hat the vector perpendicular to dA, and say dv is the integral of dA v dot n hat dt. We divide by dt and say dv dt is the integral of v dot n hat dA. Now we will examine the integrand, v dot n hat dA. Say we have a square of points, each with some velocity. The sides of our square we will label delta x, delta y, and the center point is x, y. n hat for each side is perpendicular to that side. We will examine four points, x, y minus delta y over 2, x, y plus delta y over 2, x plus delta x over 2, y, and x minus delta x over 2, y. In our integrand v dot n hat dA, v dot n hat is the perpendicular component of velocity, which is the x velocity for the sides of the square and the y velocity for the top and bottom, and dA is the length of each side. We rearrange these to put the vy's and vx's together. Examining these terms, we can see that they are equivalent to derivatives, since looking at some function f of x, f of x plus delta x minus f of x minus delta x divided by delta x is equivalent to rise over run, or the derivative of f. Thus, we can rewrite our expression as dvy dy delta x delta y plus dvx dx delta x delta y. We simplify this expression. Our result is defined as the divergence of v times dv. Thus, we are finally able to say that the integral over the perimeter s that describes how volumes change over time is equal to the integral over the volume v of the divergence of the velocity. With these tools, we are finally ready to prove Laville's theorem, and it turns out to be a simple task indeed. Say we have a point z equals qp moving in phase space. The velocity of this point is z dot equals q dot p dot, which we know from the Hamiltonian equations of motion is equal to dh dp negative dh dq. If we have many of these points, all moving through phase space, we can find the change in volume of the surface they define using the formula from earlier, the integral over v of the divergence of velocity times dv. Examining the integrand and using the divergence theorem, we see that the divergence of v is equal to d dq q dot plus d dp p dot, which is equal to d dq dh dp plus d dp negative dh dq. We have two double derivatives here, and since the order in which the differentiations of a double derivative are performed doesn't matter, we see that this is equal to zero, and the change in volume of our surface is zero. And there we have it, Laville's theorem. The volume enclosed by a surface moving through phase space remains constant at all times.